The wait is finally over. We've been talking about this for months and months. This is the Monster Jam All-Star Challenge. It's night number one as we bring Chicago-style racing to Sam Boyd Stadium for the first time ever in an all-new best trick competition. It is Team Fire versus Team Ice. We are back at Sam Boyd Stadium. This is the All-Star Challenge, and this is Monster Jam. Welcome to the first ever Monster Jam All-Star Challenge at Sam Boyd Stadium in Las Vegas, Nevada. I'm Scott Jordan alongside Gravedigger's Morgan Kane and Leslie Mears, and it is a night of first as tonight we bring Chicago-style racing into Sam Boyd Stadium, and we debut the first ever best trick competition. 24 of the biggest and best superstars in Monster Jam are here to compete for Team Fire or Team Ice. Morgan, excited to have you here in Las Vegas, man. Talk about practice yesterday and what you expect to see out of Team Fire and Team Ice. So I really think it was interesting because it's something that Nobody, nobody's really ever seen before. I mean, you have this big, giant Friday night Chicago-style racing, and normally in the back, we're starting line back there. So I think for everything that's going to happen, there are going to be three areas in the track, big sweeper in the back, and the two jammers that you have to check up for before you take off to the finish line. So it's going to be really interesting tonight. I'm excited. And Leslie, you're going to be back in the pits. Of course, you've been here many, many years. You know what an experience it is at Sam Boyd in the pits. Talk about what you're feeling, what you're hearing from the drivers. So as far as driving style is concerned, there's really two camps of drivers out there. They're those guys that want to start on the ice lane because they feel that that's going to give them an opportunity to really gain some confidence in the track and to kind of like round those corners and get ready for the big sweeping turn in the back of the house. And then the other camp are the guys who want to take that turn first to get it out of the way because they're more familiar with the latter half of the track and they think that they can make up the time there. Everybody is so excited about it though. And for these guys to develop their own own tricks. You know, they got to play with their Spin Master toys. They got to check them out at home first. You know, kind of make that come to fruition on the track tonight is really something special. Eight driver athletes have automatically advanced into round number two. So that draft strategy will continue as the team captains set their brackets. Welcome to Las Vegas. This is the Monster Jam All Star Challenge. Team Fire stacked with team captain Tom Mentz and Max D. Fire. Interesting how we got here. There were six competing trucks in 2019. Ten drivers were selected by you, the fans, at MonsterJam.com. The other eight selected by the team captains as we take a look at the stacked team ice. For more on the bracket, let's go down to Leslie. So the captains both came in with very detailed plans. And the running order has been set for our best trick competition tonight with Lindsey Reed kicking it off in similar fashion to how she did at World Finals earlier this year. And then bookending the competition, it'll end with Neil Elliott. But some of the toughest decisions that they had to make came during the selection of our racing bracket behind me here. You can see that the left bracket is very heavy handed, including our captains paired up against each other as the last match of round one on that side of the bracket. And then on the right hand side of the bracket, you've got the Anderson family all pitted in the same corner of the bracket. Eight trucks also automatically advance to round two. And in a 24 truck bracket, such as this one, we normally see the winner of the whole competition come out of that round. So statistically, those folks have the advantage. We are ready to open up round number one of this incredible Chicago-style racing bracket. There's Neil Elliott and Max D up against Charlie Pock and a Gravedigger Fire. Each round one matchup is Fire versus Ice. So we're going to know right away who has the advantage. Blue lane and orange lane. Here we go with this incredible round one matchup. You know, the track is totally different. It's a driver track is what it is. And every corner is something different. And you can either gain speed or lose speed. So that's what's great about it, I think. It's more of a driver course. You've got to really be on your game all the more and click every, be consistent every turn, every turn. That's the thing about this course. It's more of a challenging driver course. And Neil Elliott is going into the last corner for this round. Charlie's going to have to pick up some time, so we should see some, some good pickup here. And he didn't even check up. He went for the big air. Oh, man. 
What so, an exciting first round. And Neil Elliott and Max Nee gets one for Team Ice. So yesterday in practice, the Brodozer lost the top turbo, and so they had to replace that overnight. But the real detriment to the team is the fact that Heavy D did not get to drive the diesel-powered truck in practice to know how it's going to react on the track. He says this truck loves turns, so that's where he's going to make up the lost time from the jammer stack is at the turns on both ends. What a year for Heavy D and Team Bro Dozer, the 2019 Monster Jam Co-Rookie of the Year. But he has got no easy task, Rapid Team Ice. That's the 2019 World Finals High Jump Champion. There is a look at Cynthia Gautier in Monster Month Dalmatian Ice. She comes back in, hits that jammer, and now she has got to pick up that speed with Heavy D coming back inside the stadium. There is that drift turn we saw in practice yesterday. A lot of drivers having trouble right there, and Heavy D gets it. Over the jammer he goes, Cynthia trying on her side as well. This is gonna be a finish for Heavy D in Brodozer, evening the odds one-to-one, -one, Team Fire and Team Ice. Our third round one matchup, the Black Pearl representing Team Ice in that blue lane. Then in the orange lane, it's Tyler Menega and Grave Digger for Team Fire. Nobody has more racing wins coming into tonight than Tyler Menega. The track's all right. It's actually really long. Uh, there's a lot of technical driving that goes into it. Uh, it's like a 36 second lap to go around the whole track. I think it's the fastest time put into practice. So uh, you just got to pace yourself, be consistent, and uh, maybe you'll end up on top. As a triple threat series West champion, nobody else in this field has more than Tyler Morgan. Well, Tyler's definitely getting a lot of seat time while he's on the triple threat series, but here is a big floor. And just like he said, you're going to have to be consistent to make sure that you get to the finish line. And Cole Bernard definitely put in a tight race there. It was a nice push there by the Black Pearl. Not enough to derail Gravedigger. So another one for Team Fire. Here comes the team captain. He put this team together. It started at the All-Star Draft, and they challenged each other at the bracket draw at the pit party. We saw that. I think the coolest thing at the, at the bracket challenge was that they had a chance to really set this bracket up and really be competitive. And with them choo choosing each other to race, it was, uh, it was pretty bold. But... I think what we're seeing right now after these first round races is that a lot of the time is being picked up from the jammer. How quickly can you get over the jammer and get your front wheels and back on the ground and get moving? Scott Buteau taking it really wide out there, but it could it could help him because he's keeping that momentum up. Now here comes Tom Manson, Max D. Fire with six racing championships inside this stadium. And Monster Jam World Finals getting over the jammer, but I think maybe in an upset there, Scott Buto gets it for Team Ice. What a nice win for Buto and the entire Team Ice squad. Here we go with Cam McQueen, the 2012 World Finals freestyle champ. He is up against Colton Eichelberger in Max D. This is a matchup we watched in practice. I am excited to see who crosses the finish line first. Definitely, and I think that Colton has a, has a good style because he has been in the triple threat. He has a tight quarters while he's in these arenas. Um, but out here, Cam has an advantage because he is used to a big stadium floor. He's really been Jones and be back in the truck. And now that they're racing each other, this is going to be a great competition at the finish line. Cam McQueen had a quiet 2019 when it comes to Monster Jam, but look at the finish coming up here, and sideways goes Cam McQueen. So it is Colton Eichelberger and Max D getting the win for Team Fire. And now we move on to another Fire versus Ice matchup. Barry Musauer and Zombie Fire against a rising star, John Gordon and Bat Company. I had the chance to spend a tour this year with John Gordon, and he has been stepping his game up with a lot of summer shows, great seat time, so look for him to be really fast in this round. Zombie Fire made it all the way to the final round in Orlando at World Finals 20 and there's a little bit of air on that jammer and we're even talking about that the drivers that are getting the less air are the ones that seem to get the faster time going over that. I think the biggest advantage when you get up to that jammer is drive up it, jam the brakes right when your tires are right at the top of it so that way it drags. Barry was just a little bit late on it but they're both getting the same bounce but that was a great pass. And I think John Gordon and Bad Company took advantage of that so maybe another upset here in round one. Team Ice getting the win. Kristen Anderson and Gravedigger unveiled that brand new Gravedigger ice truck, but she is on the other side from Lindsey Reed in Scooby-Doo representing Team Fire. This is an exciting matchup. Let's take a look. Scooby-Doo getting off the line a little faster, heading outside the lane. Kristen Anderson with the tight turn coming around that drift. Well, Kristen definitely came into this weekend looking to try and relax a little bit. She has a lot of pressure from her social media fans. I mean, definitely being an Anderson and being a Gravedigger, she wants to just really perform well and focus on on the track. 
Kristen Anderson now coming back inside the stadium in Gravedigger Ice. I love the body on that truck. Spin Master had the truck out throughout 2019, and it is incredibly cool in real life. So Kristen Anderson now up over the jammer, and here comes Lindsey Reed. But Gravedigger Ice gets over the finish line, and a big win for Kristen Anderson. Nice job, nice job. She can shave a little bit of time off of that, you know, by making sure that she's more consistent in the corners. But these two guys right here, I believe we're going to see the fastest time of the night. Normally when me and Adam race together, or me and Kristen race together, it kind of takes a little bit of pressure off of each other because we're kind of relying on one another to do well. And if I don't do well, I want Adam or Kristen to do well and kind of take over and make the name proud. But here's a little bit different scenario. Me and Kristen are on the same team. We're both on Team Ice. So yeah, I definitely want us to win. I want us to do good. If I don't do good, I want Kristen to do good. Adam, it's going to be hard. It's, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to be able to not cheer for him, but at the same time, I'm cheering for him. You know, other team to beat me. So a bit of a different feel for the Anderson brothers tonight as they are going up against each other on separate teams. And despite a late push by Grave Digger, it is son of a digger with another win for Team Ice in round one. And if you're keeping score at home, eight head-to-head -head matchups. It is five to three in favor of Team Ice for round one. Eight more trucks enter the bracket. Round two is next. This portion of Monster Jam is brought to you by America's Best Contacts and Eyeglasses. It's not just a better deal, it's America's Best. Welcome back to the fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada, night number one of the Monster Jam All-Star Challenge. We're now moving into round two of America's Best Contacts and Eyeglasses Racing. This Chicago-style track has proven a challenge inside and outside of Sam Boyd Stadium. And here we go. Let's kick it off round two. It is Corey Rummel and Megalodon Fire against Neil Elliott and Max D representing Team Ice. So we got Neil Elliott and Max D off the line a little bit faster. Corey Rummel has his work cut out for him in this round two matchup. Well, we definitely saw some, some good passes, good times in the round one, but everyone here in the second round that hasn't raced it has a major disadvantage because the people that have raced first round like Neil Elliott, he has a huge advantage because he knows, all right, this part of the track is going to be slick. This is how I need to take it over the top of this roller. But he, oh man, little bobble in the corner. I think that's going to cost him some time. We got a little sideways. Let's see if Megalodon Fire can pick it up. Some major air off that. That is going to cost Corey Rummel. And it is Neil Elliott and Max D moving on for Team Ice. That is why he was the third overall pick in the All-Star Draft. Well, this is a great matchup right here. I think John Zimmer is probably one of the best racers in the game right now because he is so consistent. But racing Heavy D, I think he's got a disadvantage because of Heavy D having the turbo. He has the lag. He's able to be more consistent over the jumps. Um, but John is a heck of a racer, and this is going to be a great round. And John Zimmer, Dragon Ice, like that lane in practice yesterday. Gets wide on that turn, and he is going to take the drip with the jammer with a slight bobble there. And there is Heavy D and Brodozer now coming back around. That diesel power truck so smooth on this long marathon style track. Now John Zimmer gets that turn there a little bit better. There is another jammer run for both of them. Heavy D off the ramp, and that is close. Might be a five second penalty. We'll see if he got both tires over the starting line. Doesn't matter. John Zimmer and Dragon Ice moving on. There is a replay finish. Wow, that is the closest matchup we have seen so far. That's a good one, but it's just a little bit of a mistake, and, and I think that with mistakes that are gonna, that you're going to see tonight, uh, I mean, this is such a new format. Nobody's ever raced this course before, so it's a learning curve every time. Now, we mentioned Tyler Menega, Grave Digger, with that inflated triple threat series racing record, but he still has a lot of success in Sam Boyd Stadium coming into this event. 786 is his winning percentage in Las Vegas. But here in Las Vegas, it is a total different ball game. I mean, this floor is massive, this track. I mean, you're seeing 30 second times, which you never see in racing. And it's so exciting. Little bobble from Tyler. Could this be the difference? The same thing has been happening throughout this bracket where they come around that turn. But look at the way he gets over that jammer man so tires smooth. on the ground. And that is going to do it. So Tyler Menega in Gravedigger moving on for Team Fire. 35.292. And here is the team captain again at Team Ice. So this is an ice versus ice matchup. No matter who wins, Team Ice advances. Well, since Todd hasn't had a round yet, uh, he had a bad practice because of the blown motor. Um, and, and it's tough. You know, because you have that in the back of your head as a driver, you know, okay, man, this guy's already had a couple passes down the down the lane, and uh, 
I think it's going to be tough for him to make up a lot of ground because Scott's on it. In 2015, Tyler Duke won the World Finals Racing Championship in this building, but on a different track, so that does not matter here. And there is El Toro Local Ice getting around the turn. Now Monster Energy gets a little air on the jammer. We'll see if he can put it on. And he accelerates across the finish line. So Team Ice wins this one. Tyler Duke, Monster Energy moving on to round three. That's a great time, and I really believe that a lot of these times, you know, we're going to see as we go round after round, they're going to increase, you know, and I think that we're going to shave seconds off of it. But this round right here, two Triple Threat Series racers, Cody Saussier put one of the fastest times down in practice, and he has always been consistent here in Vegas. He loves the atmosphere, loves the fans, and here we go into this first cross the finish line. Yeah, you mentioned that Cody Saussier, 15 and 5 lifetime in Sam Boyd Stadium, the fourth highest winning percentage among this all star field. Tyler Menega advanced earlier, and now his buddy Colt Eichelberger and Max D trying to get it done for Team Fire as well, but nobody wants to draw Cody Saussier. Cody is nailing these jammers right now with the fastest time tonight, 35.1. It is fantastic. Great pass by Cody Saussier. His team ice teammate John Gordon in bad company and Jim Kohler in Avenger and I love the way that Avenger fire body looks we'll see if he can put up the test that John Gordon is going to give him Jim Kohler a veteran has had so much success when it comes to Sam Boyd and Monster Jam World Finals but Morgan this isn't World Finals this is the all-star challenge well this right here is more of a matchup than just tonight these guys battle it out all the time during the summer shows. They're always trying to be trying to be the king of the, of the event, and uh, I really believe that Kohler wants to make sure that he pushes John down. And then in cap view of John Gordon in bad company now turning around that orange lane, and there is Kohler trying to gain some ground over the jammer. But look at bad company so smooth across the finish line, and John Gordon, what a night he is having in bad company. Out of a hot and whiplash rolling up to the starting line for the first time tonight. She has a tough challenge of Kristen Anderson and Grave Digger Ice, two of the most dominant female superstars in Monster Jam. Going at it, one will advance to round number three, but either way, Team Ice walking away with another one. I think I just want to like spotlight on this Grave Digger Ice body that Kristen's been running. It's fantastic. It's such a nice addition to this show. I mean, this event right here is the Fire and Ice event. This is the biggest event that we've had this year uh, next to World Finals. And, and with these competitors that are in here, I mean, these are the best of the best. It's great racing. Yeah, we knew we were going to see some surprises here in Gravedigger Ice. That body, uh, an awesome following already. Brianna Mahat in Whiplash getting across the finish line. So a nice run for her, and she will move on to round three. There is your bracket. It is Fire and Ice matching up and very, very dominant in round two was Team Ice in the head-to-head -head matchups. They were 5-0, and oh, so Team Ice now starting to roll away. We are not done. Round three is next from Las Vegas. This is night number one of the Monster Jam All-Star Challenge from Las Vegas. We are back at Sam Boyd Stadium, and we are now into round three, the quarterfinals. And Morgan, if you're looking at that bracket, there is one remaining member of Team Fire. That's Tyler Menega in Grape Digger. Well, I know it's tough, especially for Team Fire, to be able to come out as a victory tonight. I mean, we still have another event, but here in racing, ice is dominating. You have to get started early if you're going to compete. So Team Fire now putting themselves in quite the hole. John Zimmer and Dragon Ice up against Neil Elliott and Max D. They were pitted against each or next to each other at the pit party. So there was a lot of talk amongst those two about how they needed to get started in racing. And they are doing it. But one of these athletes are going to advance into our Final Four. Well, these guys right here, I mean, they are veterans of the sport. These, they've put enough time driving behind a Monster Jam truck longer than I've been alive. I mean... It's amazing what they have accomplished in the careers that they've been in, but Neil is really getting after it here. Yeah, he stayed up on two wheels, so he still was able to accelerate and pick up speed. Let's see if John Zimmer can take advantage of the rare mistake from Neil Elliott. Here they come across the finish line, and it is Neil Elliott and Max D. So what a save for him to go from that bicycle out back to get across there before Dragon Ice. Well, I mean, you, you say it's a mistake, but I really feel like that helped him out. You know, it was able he was able to keep a lot of his momentum uh, and with that coal over truck, he's able to just plant that tire and get after it. Now here we go with Team Fire. One remains. Grave Digger up against Todd Duke and Monster Energy. 
You gotta think Tom Mintz, the captain, is watching this race very closely because you get into that final four round. 90 points are up for grabs in the final four, so this race huge for Team Fire. And here comes Gravedigger over the jammer, and now he's figuring that out, Morgan. Oh yeah, that's a way to do it right there. Over the jammer, Tyler Meninga is figuring out right, right when his, oh boy. Oh no, what a mistake. Almost a great save, but that's not gonna matter here. Todd the Duke with a clear shot to that finish line and he is not gonna have any issues. So Team Fire is now eliminated from racing and we are not even into the semifinals yet. Well, I mean, yes, we have Team Fire and Team Ice, but this is gonna be a true competition right here because I know there's a lot of individual talent on Team Ice and I know that that person that's gonna come out on top tonight wants to be able to hold that trophy up proud. Speaking of proud, you gotta be proud of Bad Company. John Gordon in his Vegas racing debut now in the quarterfinals. But Cody Saucier, Monster Energy, has been putting in the fastest times of the night that started at practice last night, now continuing from round one and round two. Yeah, John's been putting down some great passes, good times, but he's gonna have to really pick it up to be able to catch Cody Saucier. Cody has a good style, he steers a lot with the rear steer and guides with the front. John's more of a front steer, which I feel like that's gonna make the biggest difference as we're coming to the finish line. Now he gets some big air, but Cody Saucier getting that acceleration over the jammer and Monster Energy now with two teammates, not just Team Ice, but Monster Energy in the semifinals. Ryan Anderson and Son of a Digger now approaching the starting line. He will rock out of that blue lane. In the orange lane, it is Brianna Mahan in Whiplash. Two more teammates of Team Ice battling for that one spot in the semifinal round. But Ryan Anderson, Son of a Digger, he is starting to get comfortable here in Las Vegas. He's really being able to pinpoint his turns. He's gonna try and figure out what's the fastest way for me to get around this track. And this is a good race for him to practice and make sure that he's getting as tight as he can to shave just a tenth of a second off of his time. And you know there's not a track that Ryan Anderson cannot get down after a couple passes. And he has that turnout back down pat. Let's see the jammer, a little bit of air, but he slows it down, hitting the brakes. And Brianna Mahan not having the same luck. And Ryan Anderson wobbly across the finish line, but across nonetheless. Son of a digger, moving on to the semifinals. That time right there, Scott, was the fastest time we've seen tonight. He's the first person to break into 34 seconds. And there are the final four competitors, Max D, Monster Energy, Monster Energy, and Son of a Digger. More racing up next. This portion of Monster Jam is brought to you by Great Clips. Great Clips, it's gonna be great. This portion of Monster Jam is brought to you by Spin Master Toys. Real trucks, real action, Monster Jam. Welcome back to the All-Star Challenge. We are now to the semifinals of racing, so let's talk to the team captain of Team Ice. So, Scott, an unfortunate turn of events for Team Fire means that it's going to be an all-team ice semifinal. How are you feeling about your picks now? Pretty fortunate. You know, I felt great when we did the lineup, you know, it's uh, it was very strategic. We went to dinner last night as a team, a lot of us did, and today we collaborated, talked to each of the individual and saying, here's where we want you to be. So everybody had input on this strategy, and in Vegas, sometimes things work out just for you. You know, a lot of people were scratching their heads when they saw the way that you did the bracket because they were confused about some of your picks, but it seems like now all the cards are falling in your favor. That's what happens sometimes. You know, sometimes you, you get that lucky, you know, and uh, we strategically planned it. it. It did just work out in our favor, but hey, that's what Vegas is all about. You never know what's going to do, so you throw your cards on the table, wherever they lie, they are, and right now they're lying with Team Ice. Vegas a lot about luck, but also about skill here. When the draft happened, it looked like Team Fire was the team built for racing, but Team Ice flat out dominant and 90 points already going to them no matter what happens. And our first matchup, Neil Elliott and Max D on one side in that blue lane. On the other side, it's Todd the Duke and Monster Energy. This is definitely not the first battle these two have raced each other in. Uh, they've spent time on tour together. Um, looks like Neil's got a little bit of, bit of a problem. I don't know if it's electrical issues because he was having issues in practice yesterday with his batteries uh, so I'm hoping that they took care of it but Todd's looking like he's got a buy run 
And this happened last round with Grave Digger, so Monster Energy was able to just slow it down, take his time, get across the finish line, and almost a victory pass there over Max D. So Todd LeDuc in Monster Energy, and I just mentioned that a lot of skill for Todd. He's a two-time World Finals champion, but I don't think anybody has been luckier tonight than Todd LeDuc. Well, definitely as a driver, I mean, for me, I don't ever want to have to slow down and, and go across the line like that because it's, it's kind of a... It kind of puts it in your mind that, all right, I can slow down here, and you're not going as fast as you can go all the time. Ryan has been doing that. He's been able to come out every every time he's pulling to the line, he's pulling it wide open as fast as he can go every round. And in the orange lane, it's Cody Saucier, Monster Energy. In the blue lane, it's Ryan Anderson and Son of a Digger. I believe they have three of the four fastest times of the night recorded. It was the same in practice one night ago. So a battle of two steel titans. One will advance to meet Todd the Duke. Look at the skill of Cody Saucier around that turn over the jammer. But there is Son of a Digger in the orange lane, gaining ground and gaining fast. Well, these two definitely have the fastest momentum of any drivers out there. But the true difference is going to be on this jammer. Who can scrub the fastest and get over to the finish line? And this is going to be close, but it's son of a tigger. So Ryan Anderson made up some ground, and he gets the win. And that is going to put Ryan Anderson and son of a tigger in the racing final. You talk about two heavyweights. These are two former World Finals racing champions. Todd and Ryan have both won in the stadium before. It is ice versus ice, and this is what it's all come down to. Chicago-style racing monster energy and son of a digger. Well, Ryan is the only competitor tonight that has broken into 34 seconds. And really, Todd's got to pick it up a little bit because it's Ryan's going to run away with it back in the back. Now you talked about Todd having those two slow passes with Grave Digger and Max D having issues, and this might come back to haunt him. There's a look at Team Ice. They're going to win no matter what. But Ryan Anderson and Son of a Digger, look at the air from the Duke. But it is Son of a Digger. And you got to notice that, that Grave Digger wheel that he had put on his truck for this final round, and he is going to walk away with the racing win, 33.9. That is the fastest time of the night. Ryan has two fast times of the night, and he comes out on top for Team Ice, 24 points for the night, and Team Ice has got a lot of confidence going into best trick. Ryan Anderson, son of a digger, the first overall selection of the All-Star Draft, and that is why. Let's go down and hear from our winner. Ryan, first round, you paired up against your brother, Adam. How much confidence did that give you tonight, taking him out in that first round? I'll be honest with you. We were definitely on different teams, but that was my least favorite race. And there's no, nothing better than blood. I didn't want to take out my big brother, but I had to do it tonight. And the deal is with me and Adam and Kristen, if I beat one of them or they, they beat me, you got to continue on and win this whole thing. So that's what I did tonight for my big brother. I got my dad here, my girlfriend here, my little brother, my little sister, and my buddy right here, David Stanton, my new crew chief. He kept, kept that thing alive. My brakes were going out every round. I was having issues every single round. And if it wasn't for him and all the guys helping out back there, it wouldn't be that, man. But you guys know my last name. You know who my dad is, Dennis Sanders. You know what he created. Tonight's going to be awesome. Best trick is going to be great. But I came from North Carolina to tear it up for freestyle tomorrow, baby. Woo! Who's ready for America's best contacts and eyeglasses look in? One of my favorite shows to watch on NBCSN is Meekum Auctions. Some great celebrities have been there. Morgan Kane, Dennis Anderson spent time there, and Morgan is standing by with our friends from Meekum Auctions. Well, the easiest way to describe it, it's like a car show, but it's got a pulse. It's not all about the cars. It's about the energy and the excitement and the amount of commerce that's going on. We'll do about $20 million in sales over three days at this auction. We run about 35 great collector cars per hour. So it's very fast paced, a lot of color, a lot of excitement, and we love to share it with people. That's great. And one thing that I just wanted to mention on this stage right here is that Beacom is a family owned deal, right? And that's what we're all about in Monster Game. It's all about family. So Scott, tell us what you guys are about. Yeah, it's Dana Meekum. It's his brainchild. It's 30 plus years in the auction business. And in addition to what John said, it's really the best 
car show that you'll ever go to. I mean, you'll go around and walk around the building, whatever city we're in, and you can see stuff that'll bring back memories of, hey, that's a car that my dad had when I was a kid, or the kid down the street had, his dad had one. And what memory, I call it the cars of our lives, and Dana Meekham is really all about that. It's such a family-friendly thing. Little kids on the auction block dropping the hammer from time to time, and it is a blast. Now what we have right now, we got $500, we got $5, we need $550, we got $5, $5, $5, $5, $5, $5, $5, $5, $5, $5, $5, $5, $5, $5, $5, $5, $5, $5, $5, $5, $5, $5, $5, $5, $5, $5, $5, $5, $5, $5, $5, $
Porter. This is not a high jump competition, but that was his trick, and he nailed it. Well done for Mr. Excitement. The fans in Vegas letting him hear it. And your new leader again for Team Fire is Avenger 8.618. Now Brianna Mahan representing Team Ice gets a go. A slap wheelie for Whiplash. She launches it across the ramp, and she's gonna try to save it and nails it, a perfect landing for Whiplash. And Brianna Mahan, what a trick for her. She had an amazing freestyle in Orlando at World Finals, and she is out of the truck. Your new leader is Whiplash. Brianna just got first place, Team Ice, baby, woo! And although that was a great crash, great save, it wasn't the attempt Brianna was trying to do, which was a front flip. We're doing pretty good. We got some high scores out there, so. We might not be in the lead right now, but we definitely have the most of the higher scores, so we'll see what happens in the end. Well, it's good to see that Team Fire is still positive in this event. Now, the best trick. Next up, Bryce Kenny, Great Clips Mohawk Warrior. He's going to be attempting a corkscrew. Ooh, not quite getting the pop that he wanted. Locker unlocked in the front, couldn't quite get a cool save. Uh, enough for ninth place. Next competitor, John Gordon, Bad Company, going for a forward momentum backflip and still not getting the same pop. You would think as, as drivers they would see, okay, you know, that's, that's the fourth attempt on that obstacle, and it's not giving you the pop that you want. Here comes Heavy D and Bro Dozer for Team Fire. Taking his time, there's a bicycle for Heavy D. He's got it on the sidewalls of the BKT tires, and he's gonna try to save this. If he would have saved that, it would have been spectacular. Still got the bicycle in and the sidewall, but not quite enough for Heavy D. Now repping Team Ice, Cam McQueen in Northern Nightmare. He's gonna get some air over the buses and a slap wheelie. Not sure what he was looking for there, but another slap wheelie now as he keeps this run going. Cam McQueen, Northern Nightmare, eighth place overall. It's time for the original Super Glue Corporation pit report. So Camden Murphy just barely rolls off the line there in second round of racing. So what were you feeling inside the truck? Well, we lost the transmission right off the line. It went first, second, and just had nothing. And, and I figured, well, I'll at least try and go back to first, and it wasn't even there either. So I don't know what it is about this place, Sam Boyd Stadium. Vegas is just not for me. It's just. We always have such bad luck here every single time. I mean, the, the earlier year that we had, or the earlier show we had this year, we broke first jump in freestyle, and every other year at the World Finals, we just had issues too. So I don't know what it is about this place, but I can promise you guys we're going big in this Best Trick Challenge. Yeah, you've got an opportunity to redeem yourself here in Best Trick, and so what are the chances the guy's gonna get the transmission out, a new one back in, and get you ready for that? Well, these Monster Jam technicians are the best in the business, and my crew chief, John Fitchett, I wouldn't have anyone else. He's the man, the best of the best, so he'll have it ready to rock and roll, and I promise I'm gonna break this truck in half. Well, it's tough for Camden Murphy. He has had bad luck in the past, but Bakugan Dragonoid coming out for Best Trick, attempting a corkscrew. Still not getting the pop, but he got the save, and the scores are coming in. 7.760, enough for third place. Next competitor, Kristen Anderson, Grave Digger Ice. Looks like she's gonna be lining up for a corkscrew. I hope she can carry enough speed in because she just saw Camden Murphy flop over. Mm, still not enough speed. I feel like if you hit it faster, it would it would probably give you that pop. It's enough for 11th place, but still on the top of the leaderboard is an attempt that wasn't even meant to be. I mean, it was a great crash, spectacular, but it wasn't a front flip, which is what she intended to do. You know, my champ fans, Team Ice may be down in this competition. We've got some heavy hitters coming up. Just wait for our best trick. This portion of Monster Jam is brought to you by America's Best Contacts and Eyeglasses. It's not just a better deal, it's America's Best. The Monster Jam All-Star Challenge, an epic event here at Sam Boyd Stadium. And so far, it's been Team Fire dominating this second competition. But look at Tyler Menenga in Grave Digger now with a moonwalk. Gets it up on the nose, and he is just sitting pretty as he tries to take over the lead from Team Fire. Looking like he was going for another flip, but he's going to save this one. And he's now back into a wheelie. So we talk about Brianna not hitting what she meant to hit, but sometimes, Morgan, it is the things that you don't plan on that get you those scores. Tyler Menega, Grave Digger now moving up into third place. So he takes one spot away from Team Ice. Cole Bernard, the Black Pearl Monster Truck, representing Team Ice, now gonna try to combat what Tyler just did in Grave Digger. The Monster Energy backflip ramp for the Black Pearl, and look at the air he gets. 
That right rear axle looks like it just broke in two, but he is now in fourth place, so two great hits in a row. Colton Eichelberger, one of the pioneers of the moonwalk. Uh, he's going to be attempting a moonwalk into a backflip, so this is an extremely tough trick. Um, but moonwalk is definitely something that Colton has perfected. He's had all chance in the triple threat series to, to practice it, and just he looks so comfortable when he's doing a moonwalk like this. But he's trying to line up to where the momentum will carry him into the into the eight pack, and he'll get that good pop to swing the rear end around. But uh, man, this is kind of a beat. Oh, here we go. Didn't quite get the pop he wanted, but it was still spectacular, a crash, enough for eighth place. I know he's not happy about that, but on to our next competitor, Monster Energy, Todd LeDuc for Team Ice. Looking like he's lining up for a reverse backflip. And, oh, if you notice there, on that attempt, it looks like the container might have broke. There are ribbons up there that hold the containers together, and it looked like it gave way, so it didn't quite get that rotation that he wanted. Adam Anderson, a grave digger for Team Fire, getting some room here, has some space, the eight pack, and he's gonna go sideways, looks like a pirouette attempt, and he ends up a little short of the save, so Adam Anderson had a great uh, idea in mind, couldn't execute it, and now we move on to his brother, Ryan Anderson, and son of a digger, our racing winner from tonight for Team Ice, there is a backflip in the center of the track, he nails it, and he's gonna go one more time, so back to back, flips for Ryan Anderson and he's not done, continuing to go in reverse, trying for an exciting save, but still hits the back flips and he tried to run that truck into the crowd. Fourth place for Son of a Digger. And the team captain, Tom Mintz, Max D. Fire, is gonna be attempting a maximum moonwalk. That's exactly what he's been doing all year. He's perfected this trick. He's a professional at this now and, and honestly, I'm tired of seeing it, but he's really good at it. He's gonna back up, go into a moonwalk and then for the best trick, he's going to attempt a reverse backflip. This should be pretty exciting. The fans are up. Tom is reaching his arm out the window, getting the fans on their feet. He's pumped up. This is extreme concentration here from Tom Mintz and Team Fire. He's getting the room he needs. He's waiting for the rear of the truck to drop down a little bit so he can get that momentum into the face of the jump. And there he goes. Ah, dropped the rear end down, but still able to get it around. Nice job, completes what he said he was going to do. One of the only drivers to do that tonight. I'll be interested to see what these scores are, Scott. Yeah, Tom Mintz, Max D, Fire. He was the 2019 Great Clips Two Wheel Skills Challenge World Champion. Of course, that move got him there. This is not that competition, but the fans are ready. And in 8.504, and look at the disappointment from Team Fire. He nailed it. You mentioned that, man. One of only three drivers tonight to actually hit the tricks they planned. And now we move on to Neil Elliott and Max D. And with Neil, he is the last competitor in the best trick competition. Going to be attempting a moonwalk into a flip. And it's exactly what he did at the world final. So let's see if he can do it again. And, oh, not quite getting that momentum he needed to be able to put it back on all fours. But enough for ninth place. There's your winner. She has made history tonight. She had an incredible weekend in Orlando at Freestyle, getting on the podium and now adding to her resume as the first ever best trick competition winner in Las Vegas at the All-Star Challenge. So the dominant night for Team Ice continuing with Whiplash's win, 24 points, going to Team Ice. An incredible first night of this competition. Let's hear from our best trick winner, Brianna Mahan and Whiplash. Flash. Honestly, God, I thought I was going to pass out, to be honest with you. It's just the adrenaline to be here, to be able to make history, to be the first female to bring home this event. We had so many female champions at World Finals. This was redemption, and we're here to tell us that the ladies are here to play, boys. Does it make it any more special here that you take home the best trick competition in Las Vegas at Sam Boyd Stadium with its storied history? It does, because honestly, I've got so many friends and family in the stands. I have a brand new crew chief with me that we've never really been together but one show. To come out here and to prove a point that I'm ready, ready to step up my game. You know what, it may not have been the perfect trick, but it turned out pretty dang cool. Well, you are the best trick competition winner. Let's give it up one more time for Brianna Mahan and Whiplash. 
And the woman's evolution in Monster Jam continues. 24 points to Team Ice. And that is the difference so far. An excited Team Ice. Let's hear from the captain, Scott Buto. So tonight has been all about Team Ice. And so Scott Buto, I mean, what does that mean for your team to be so cohesive out here tonight and put up those numbers like they did? You know, you said it right there, cohesiveness. You know, we, uh, we collaborated as a team. We just strategically placed everybody in the in the positions we did and things worked out the way we did but this is day one of two so we have tomorrow so we have vegas style racing and then we got freestyle which i'm really excited about so it's the right step in the right direction you know but one foot forward so we're going to continue on and keep pushing forward and see what happens for tomorrow we're making history all over again tomorrow night it's the return of thunder alley and monster jam freestyle join us again for the monster jam all-star challenge